So today I would like to share uh, about uh, Avantech Wise 4000 series, uh, which is our wireless I/O modules. Okay. So before I start, uh, I want to remind you that if you have any questions, please write it, the question in the chat box. Okay. Because later on I will reply it later during the Q&A session. Okay. So uh, let's start. Okay, so this is the WISE wireless communication map. Okay, basically this chart shows uh, the WISE series wireless communication technology. Okay, so in here there is uh, several groups which are first of all the LP1 group. Okay, so we also have the Wi-Fi uh, based group. Okay, and also the cellular based group. Okay. So as you can see, there are differences between these wireless technologies. OK, so first of all, uh, if you look into the Wi-Fi, OK, this one we will use the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. OK, so as you can see here, uh, the data rate is around uh, 100 megabyte per second. And then the coverage is around 100 meter. OK, so the next cellular technology this one, the LTE, the 3G. OK, so you can see the 3G in here. The data rate is around uh, 2 Mbps. OK, and then the LTE 4G have more data rate, OK, around uh, 1 Gbps. OK, and then the range also can go further in kilometers range. OK, but it has a poor battery life, uh, like our mobile phone, right? So every day or every two days you need to charge your phone. Okay, because normally cellular technology it will consume a lot of uh, power. Okay, so the next one is the LP1. Okay, the, this is the group of LP1, which is uh, the name meanings of the name is a low power wide area network. Okay, so it can have a range up to kilometers in here, one to five kilometer in an urban uh, environment. Okay, so it's really suitable for a long range communication. And then for the data rate is uh, around 100 kbps only. Okay, but it's sufficient for customer who want to use it for IoT application where you want the device to send uh, only the small packet of data of IOs or sensor value. So uh, LP1 technology is sufficient for their needs. Okay. So this is Avantech Wireless LP1 solution. Okay, so basically this is the concept of WISE 4000 series. Basically is to provide the device to cloud solution. Okay, and help people to moving into industrial IoT era. Okay, when talking about industrial IoT, right, uh, basically uh, what are coming to our mind is actually a big data or artificial intelligence. Okay, so how to collect all all of the data and then there is a lot of data okay with less effort and lower cost so imagine okay if you want to monitor for example uh, water level okay what you will do okay for sure you don't want to check the data in person and do it every hour right so it will be troublesome for the operator itself so basically what you can do is just uh, buy a water level sensor okay and then pair it with our wireless I.O. module, the WISE 4000 series. OK, so you can collect the data from the sensor and then push the data to the cloud. So you as the engineers or the management can monitor the sensor or the water level of the sensor in front of your computer. OK, whenever you log into the cloud platform itself. OK, so it uh, reduce the uh, effort to manually check the sensor level and then it also have a lower cost because it's a wireless technology, right? You don't need to like uh, have, a, for example, wiring cost and everything and etc. Right? So that's why this is the concept of Wise 4000 series. Okay. Okay. So this is the summary of Wise 4000 series. Okay. Basically, it is a I/O module. Okay. So it has a customer's I/O module. So you can see here. Okay. It has either analog input, digital input, digital output, or even RS-485. Okay, 
So RS485 here is basically if you want to read from a MOBUS slave device, so you can use this. Okay, and then the next one is was 4000 is a wireless I/O module. So in here you can choose which are uh, the wireless technology that you want. Okay, whether it is MBIoT, LoRaWAN, LP1, or Wi-Fi, so you can choose. Okay, and then another concept of Y4000 is device to cloud. So in the cloud in here, what are the cloud platform that we support? Okay, for now we have this uh, cloud platform that we support. Okay, mainly our own uh, WisePass cloud itself. Okay, Azure, AWS, and the rest. Okay, so this is the cloud that we support. So next one, we will go through the first wireless technology. Okay. It is a MB IoT and LTE dash M. Okay, this is under WISE 4471 or WISE 4671. So, first of all, this is the chart to compare between CAP M1 and CAP NB1. So, first of all, we go through the LTE CAP NB1. Okay, this is belongs to MB IoT. Okay, uh, or the other uh, course name is a narrow band Internet of Things. Okay, it is one of LP1 radio technology standard. Okay, it also can coexist either in a GSM spectrum or LTE spectrum. Okay, it has a data rate around 100 kbps. Okay, so what are the advantage of MBIoT? First of all, you have a ultra low power consumption. Okay, translated means that you can have a long battery life. Okay, you also can have a deeper penetration. Okay, because MB IoT it is designed to enhance coverage for the application that are in hard to reach area, such as uh, deep indoor, uh, basement. Okay, so it also can have a wider deployment. Okay, MB IoT can efficiently connect large fleet of device, up to uh, fifty thousand device per MB IoT network cell. So this is can minimize the power consumption and increase the coverage range in location that are not served by conventional cellular technology. Okay, so meaning that, for example, if you are in a shopping mall, right, and then you are in a basement tree, sometimes you cannot get the cellular coverage in the uh, basement floor. Okay, but in the MB IoT, it can have a deeper penetration as compared to the conventional cellular technology. So another one is the CAT M1. Okay, CAT M1 is belongs to the LTE dash M. Okay, this one also is a one of the LP1 radio technology standard. Okay, so the difference between LTE dash M and MB IoT, first of all, is the higher data rate. Okay, you can see here it can uh, uh, have a data rate up to one Mbps. Okay, and it also a full mobility. Okay, LTE dash M, the M, uh, you can call it as a mobility. Okay, the data is more real time as compared to MB IoT. Okay, because LTE dash M has lower latency than MB IoT. Okay, due to higher data rate and a low latency, okay, it can have more accurate device positioning capabilities and real time data. Okay. So the most common use case for NB IoT, right? First of all, is including, for example, utility meters, sensors. Okay, typically used for CAT M1, uh, for example, uh, connected vehicle, wearable device, trackers, and alarm panels. Okay, because given that the CAT M1 is more powerful than NB IoT, right? It doesn't mean that uh, CAT M1 is better than NB IoT. Okay, it just means it's suitable for different application. Okay. For example, if you want to uh, monitor a oil tank in a basement, right? Okay, basement of a building. Okay, then you need to have a sensor to check the level of the oil tank from time to time. Okay, uh, the wise choice is normally you will choose the MBIoT. Okay, because it can have a deeper penetration, right? Okay, and then you want you only want to read the sensor data from time to time. It's enough. Okay, but for LT dash M, for example, if you want to have a, a monitor a vehicle, okay, so normally they will choose a CAT M1. So this is uh, our solution for the MB IoT and LTE dash M. 
Okay, so first of all, it has a two parts in the module itself. Okay, first of all is the top part, which is belongs to the wireless I/O module. Inside there, there is a chipset for the MB IoT and LT M. Okay, the bottom part is the I/O module. This is where you want to choose which uh, I/O channel that you want. Okay, whether you want to have this one for AI, for DI, or you want to have a I four five port, so you can choose which one that you want. Okay, so this is the difference. Next one is Y four six seven one. It's the same as four four seven one. The top part is the wireless I/O module. Okay, the bottom part is the uh, I/O module itself. Okay. So you guys must be wondering, all right, why there is a two product that can support both MB IoT and LTE-M. Okay, so we go to the next slide. So you can see here, this is the answer. Okay, so first of all, the left hand side is the Y4471. Okay, actually this module, right, is uh, meant for uh, indoor usage. First of all, because the device itself is not an IP65 rating, okay? Only some of the I/O module, the bottom part, have the IP65. So this module is uh, mainly for indoor. Okay, uh, it has a built-in antenna. Okay, and then uh, can be powered up using a DC line input. Okay, and then let's compare it to the Y4671. Okay, 4671 is uh, targeted for outdoor application. First of all, because the device itself Okay, have IP65 rating. Okay, another one it has a external antenna. Okay, and then the main feature is this one. It has a solar rechargeable battery. Okay. Okay, so in here, right, this means that you have a three ways to power up the device. Okay, first of all, you use a built-in rechargeable battery. The second one, you use the DC line power input. And then the third one, you can power up using the solar panel. Okay, all of this can run concurrently. Okay, another one is this one have a, a SIM card slot, which is nano size, and then this one is a micro SIM card. Okay, and then this one have a GPS uh, signal. Okay, it has another uh, feature which have a GPS signal, so you can track the location of this device. Okay, the device to cloud solution architecture. Okay. They, basically, this is the normally what our customer will use for Avantech and MB IoT and LTE M solution. Okay, the main objective is basically to collect the data from the IOs and sensors. Okay, for example, analog input sensor, sensors. Okay, and then basically send the data to the cloud platform. Okay. So all of the data that is sending out, right, either using uh, MQTT, Core App, or Lightweight M2M, it depends on the cloud platform itself. Okay, basically this is only the function. Okay, collect the data from the I/O or sensor. Okay, using MBLT, LTM radio frequency, and then send it to the cloud platform. Okay. So this is the cloud roadmap. Okay, basically what are the cloud platform that we support now is our own WiPass. SAS, okay, China Telecom, Chunghua, this system, okay, and then uh, this is in the beta version, AWS and Azure, okay, and this is in development and this is for in plan, okay. So we have a several cloud platform that uh, we supported right now. Next one is the application. What are normally you can do uh, with the device? Okay, so for example for this water sewage treatment plan. Okay. So Bionet is a basically it's a system lah, okay, to produce, uh, they produce a system for bioprocess related, okay, which in this case for the water or sewage treatment plan. So in here, there is an analog input from the pH sensor, okay, digital output to control the valve, okay. And then this is a water membrane reactor, okay. So basically, water membrane reactor is for treatment process which involves the membrane filtration equipment with the biological, biological process. So in here, they want to monitor the analog input from the water pressure, analog input from the water flow, okay, 
Next is the EDR, electrodialysis reversal. This is for the desalinization of wash water. So it can be reused. So basically all of this uh, value from the sensor right, is captured by the wireless I.O. module. Okay, and then they send the data to the cloud itself. Okay, one of it is in the sewage treatment plant. Another one is in the drainage system for the agriculture. So basically why agriculture land need to have a good drainage system? Okay, so first of all, basically when the soil have a poor drainage system, right, it will affect the root growth and the plant health. In other words, uh, the soil itself cannot uh, have too much water in it. Okay. So in here, they would like to monitor the water level uh, in the reservoir itself. Okay. So they are using a water level sensor, either from the analog type or digital type. So they monitor it and then send the data to the cloud platform. So basically, the owner itself can monitor the water level okay, using the cloud platform itself. Okay, this is for the LTE and NMBIOT. Okay. So the next one is the LoRaWAN. Okay, this is for WISE 4610 series. Okay. First of all, I want, want to explain about the, what is LoRa or LoRaWAN. Okay, LoRa is basically a long range. It's a proprietary wireless radio frequency technology, which is belong to Semtech. Okay. It is belong to category of a non-cellular LP1. Oh, yeah, of LoRaWAN nodes to different brands of LoRaWAN gateway. So that's why they want to have this standard of protocol. Okay. So another option is you want to connect the WIS4610 to third party LoRaWAN gateway. Okay, because LoRaWAN gateway is a standard protocol, right? So you can pair to any brands of gateway as long as it support LoRaWAN. Okay, but be aware of this. If you connect to a third party LoRaWAN gateway, right? The customer or the user itself need to uh, knowledgeable to do a little bit programming because basically you need to do a data parser inside there. Okay, we will provide you the uh, payload message. Okay, then you need to do your programming itself. Okay, so you need to make sure the customer or the user itself need to know how to do data passer. Okay, so this is the normal typical uh, system topology of the LoRaWAN. Okay, so first of all, WISE 4610. It's a wireless I.O. module, okay? So basically, it collects data from the sensors and the I.O. itself, okay? And then it will send the data to the gateway itself using a LoRaWAN, okay? So in the gateway itself, right, you can have a two kind of architecture, whether you want to have a public architecture or private architecture, okay? For this application, uh, you want to connect to a public architecture, meaning that the gateway itself we send the data to other third party uh, network server. Okay, if we send the data to a network server, either through LAN, Wi Fi, or 4G LTE. Okay, and then in this case, uh, the provider of the network server, you can see here, like the things network, okay, activity, okay, they will host the network server in their cloud itself, okay, in their platform itself. Okay, this is for the public architecture. Okay, basically, the LoRaWAN node send data to the gateway using LoRaWAN, okay? And then the gateway itself will send the data to a network server, okay? And then the network server is belong to somebody else, okay? Somewhere, somebody, uh, network server provider, okay? The next one is the private, private architecture, okay? This one a little bit different as the previous one, okay? In here, it will not send to a network server, Okay, because our WISE 6610 itself, right, have a built-in network server, actually. Okay, basically in here, they want to straight away send the data to the cloud itself. Okay, because inside the WISE 6610, we have our own, uh, what we call it, Y-Pass H-Link. Okay, it's very user-friendly. Okay, we have tons of cloud provider that we support. Okay, very easy to configure, don't need to do any programming. It's a utility, just select the option, then can straight away send to the cloud. 
Okay. So this is the advantage if you're using our Y6610 VH link. Okay, straight away send to the cloud. So this is the module itself. Okay, it is also an outdoor base type. Okay, first of all, because it's IP65 rating. Okay, with the uh, outdoor, uh, the range itself, okay, from the gateway to the north, it can have up to 15 kilometers. Okay, with line of sight you pair with our Y6610 gateway. Okay. Same as the uh, Y4671, it has a built-in uh, rechargeable battery. Okay. Same, you can power up using a battery or DC power input or the solar panel itself. Okay. All of this can run concurrently. Okay. So uh, for the built-in battery in here, right, so if you did not charge the battery, it can ha have a battery life up to six months. Okay, if you send the data every hour, okay, you can have a battery life up to six months. Okay, so in here you can see there is no SIM card slot because uh, LoRaWAN is not it's not a cellular based network. Okay, so same as the LTE dash M and MBLT, you have a uh, two parts in here. The first top part is the I/O wireless I/O module. Okay. In the bottom part is the I/O module, so you can choose which uh, uh, sensors or which are the analog input or digital input that you want. So, but in here, right? Okay. So in the top part here, you can see there is a three option in here. Okay, NA, EA, JA. So the different in here is the frequency range. Okay. This one is uh, 902, 923 MHz, okay. This one 800 something MHz, okay. So in here, right, you need to check with your local authority or your government, uh, okay, which frequency that your country allow for the LoRa application. Okay, you need to check with your country. Okay, basically, for example, in Malaysia itself, we use a 923 MHz, okay. And then this is the... LoRaWAN gateway itself, okay. Same as the LoRaWAN nodes, you need to choose the correct frequency, okay. For example, first of all, the LoRaWAN node, you use the US version and then you use a gateway with the EU version, you will not communicate, okay. And then another one, this one gateway, right, able to handle up to 500 LoRaWAN nodes, okay. This gateway able to handle up to 500 LoRaWAN nodes. Okay, so you need to take uh, into consideration about that one. Okay, the next one is the charge to show uh, the difference and the LoRa when LoRa and the LoRa when sorry. So LoRa and LoRa when are not compatible. Okay, like if you use the our own Y three six one zero right. Okay, so you cannot pair another LoRa when nodes to the our LoRa private gateway. Okay, so first of all, LoRa, right, is the radio frequency technology. Okay, so each country, right, we have their own uh, allowable frequency for the LoRa application. So you need to check with your own government or your own local authority, which are the frequency that uh, is allowed. Okay, then another one is the LoRa one. Okay, LoRa one is a global standard communication protocol. Okay. So in here, what I want to focus is actually this class, class A, class B, class C. Okay, LoRaWAN has defined that the LoRaWAN nodes itself uh, have a three type of class, class A, class B, and class C. So let's see what is the difference. First of all, class A is uh, for battery powered uh, nodes. Okay, this one have the most energy efficient. Okay. And then uh, LoRaWAN said that this one must be supported for all of the devices in the market. Okay. And then another one is for the class B. Okay. For battery power actuator. For this one have an energy efficiency. We only for the latency control downlink. Okay. And then the C type with the no latency. Okay. Meaning that this device only uh, mainly used for the nodes that is powered up by the power source. Okay. 
because in here right there is no latency okay if you're using the type a right and then you want to send a command to control the digital output right okay normally in here it will have a, what we call it a delay because it has a latency so if we choose the c class c okay there is no latency okay so the device itself can have a uh, continuous listen to the gateway itself okay so for our wise 4610 right we support class a for the battery efficient uh, class and also class c with no latency okay we support both for wise 4610 so after this we go to the case study okay so this is for example in a smart agriculture i believe this is in uh, vietnam okay and here uh, they want to monitor the paddy field using the LoRaWAN solution okay as you can see this is the LoRaWAN nodes and then they want to monitor the soil itself okay they want to monitor the ph sense ph value of the soil okay humidity of the soil soil temperature water flow okay and then this device right you can see in here it is battery powered and then have a solar panel to charge the battery or to power up the device okay so in here the function of the nodes itself to collect the data from these sensors okay send the data to the gateway using a LoRaWAN protocol okay in the gateway itself okay it will collect the data from the nodes itself and then pass the data to our own uh, Wi-Pass uh, cloud Okay, it's sent through a 4G or LAN. Okay, so in the cloud itself, uh, we have our own dashboard. Okay, they built the dashboard for monitoring purpose. Okay, so it is an end-to-end -end solution from the nodes to the cloud itself using an Avantech solution. Okay, in here, right, from the nodes to the gateway, they're able to achieve up to 15 kilometers. Okay, because you know paddy field is very flat and then there is no uh, obstacle in between so you can have a line of sight so that's tested you can have up to 15 kilometer of uh, range another case study is for smart factory okay so in factory right the best suited application is for uh, utility monitoring and a non-critical monitoring such as uh, warehouse uh, humidity or temperature or chemical or container level okay, or utility meter for example air oil gas pressure something like this okay so LoRaWAN is actually is not uh, meant for uh, real time monitoring and uh, critical uh, mission critical uh, monitoring okay but in here what I want to focus is actually is this one high penetration and zero packet loss so we can we will move forward to see the testing so in here we have a four scenario okay, scenario a scenario b scenario c scenario d okay the difference between this scenario right is the distance between the nodes and the gateway itself okay this is the distance okay and then the elevation difference between the nodes and the gateway you can see in here seven floor the difference okay this is uh, one stair uh, height difference only okay this is on the same uh, plane okay but there is a uh, building uh, obstruct the line of sight okay so in the top table right show the uh, different scenario okay so you can see uh, location a okay the distance between the nodes and the gateway is 240 meters around like that Okay, location B 110 meters, so you can see 105 meters, location D 150 meters. Okay, but there is a difference in height. Okay, this one same height, this one seven floor height, this one seven floor height, and this one is a one stair level only with line of sight. Okay, so let's see this is column RSSI. So RSSI is a receive signal signal strength indicator. So to understand this value, right? I'll say okay. So, uh, if the value is closer to zero, which means uh, it has a better signal. Okay, you can see here the best signal is this location C. Okay, no wonder because it has a line of sight. 
okay the one okay because uh it has a seven floor height okay and then it passing through many walls and floor okay so this means that you have a lot of uh, obstruction in between the gateway and the nodes okay but they want this data okay doesn't miss anything if you compare to the this one the below table is for the data loss okay you can see all of the scenario right has zero percent data loss okay this is because uh laura when right have an acknowledged mechanism okay they have the acknowledged me mechanism meaning that uh the gateway itself right okay when it receives the data from the nodes itself okay and then it will give an acknowledge message to the node say that hey i got your message okay so the node say, uh, will acknowledge the message and then it will send another packet for the another uh, period lah, okay so this is to ensure we have a zero percent data loss okay So another uh, LP1 solution from Advantech is uh, Y4210. Okay, this is a proprietary LP1 solution from Advantech. So Y4210 is uh, Advantech own proprietary LP1. Okay, it is a compact size with a cost effective design. Okay, so it also is a LP1 technology okay and then it also is a proprietary meaning that you need to pair uh, same nodes and same gateway okay because it's proprietary okay it's not like lora when you can uh, mix match between nodes and the gateway but for our lp1 proprietary you need to match the same uh, module of sensor nodes with the same um, module of the gateway itself okay so it also have a less interference Okay, because it uses uh, sub one gigahertz frequency. Okay, uh, it's not like the two point four gigahertz, which are very saturated in uh, factories or in the building itself. Okay, so it have a integration to the public and the private cloud services. So this product right using LP one. Okay, meaning that it can have a long range and also low power uh, capability. Okay. So, if you power up by uh, by the battery, right? You can have a three years battery uh, life. Okay, so it also able to pass the data to the cloud or the SCADA system. Okay, uh, if you go to the SCADA system, you can read the data from the gateway itself using a mobile. Okay, it can one gateway, right? Able to uh, handle up to sixty four nodes. Okay, so one gateway here able to handle up to 64 nodes okay and this one also use the star topology meaning that multiple nodes can connect only to one gateway itself okay so this is the product okay so in here uh, you can power up by the dc line power or you can choose uh, to run using a battery okay yeah, it needs uh, it use a three uh, unit of 3.6 volt AA battery. Okay, this is not a normal battery. Okay, it use a lithium thionyl chloride battery. It's not like your normal uh, AA battery that you can buy anywhere in the supermarket. Okay, so it's very uh, special battery. Okay, so <clears throat> same as the rest of the West module. Okay, the top part is where the module with the chipset and everything okay the below part is the what we call it the io module itself okay in here also you need to know the frequency that is allowable for the lp1 in your country okay this one have 868 megahertz or 923 this one is 433 megahertz so you need to check with your local authority uh and, and the additional for this product right uh, one of the product uh, support a built-in sensor which is for the temperature and humidity okay so let's go to the case study okay 
this is the case study uh, that is carried out uh, by Avantech itself in their factory in Linko. Okay. This is uh, the main objective in here is to show the indoor application capability for the WISE 4210. Okay. So in here you can see there is a several node okay, spread out across the factory. Okay, in here you have a uh, two, four, six, seven, seven nodes and two gateway. Okay, so uh, you need to remember that uh, WISE 4210 using star topology means that multiple gateway can only and uh, multiple nodes can only connect to one gateway itself. Okay. So as you know, in the indoor you have a uh, walls partition. Okay, so this can have effect the uh, signal strength also. Okay, the main things that we want to focus is actually uh, this one. Okay, basically uh, the LP1 uh, from Avantech, the WASP 4210, uh, adopt the similar acknowledge mechanism as the LoRaWAN. Okay, we have the acknowledgement. Okay, this is to ensure uh, we have a 0% data loss. So you can see the result in here. Okay, we have a 0% data loss, meaning that the data is sent same as the data is received, the total number of packet. Okay. So this one is for the WISE 4210. The next one is the WISE 4220 or WISE 4000 series. Okay, this one is a Wi-Fi base. Okay, this is a uh, very, uh, what we call it, uh, already known by a lot of our customers and our user because this is the first WASP module uh, that we uh, promote in our product line. Okay, this module right is using a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, this uh, for example this WASP 4060, the WASP 4000 series in here. Okay, it's not like the rest of WASP uh, 4000 series because the top part and the bottom part you cannot. Uh, change the module is already fixed. Okay, you can see here you can choose. Okay, if you want to have a four digital input, four digital output, so you, you need to choose this one. Okay, if you want to have a four digital input, four relay output, you, you need to choose this one. Okay, and then there is a, another uh, product line in here which is the LAN version. Okay, in here uh, means that it did not use the Wi Fi base. Okay, you use a normal uh, Ethernet cable. So all of our wires, except the one that I mentioned before, all of the wires have a modularization. Okay, meaning that in here, right, the top part is fixed. Okay, and then the bottom part you can exchange. Okay, so for example, uh, for example, you already purchased four digital input. Okay, suddenly uh, in the project itself, you need to change to analog input. So you can just buy the I.O. module that is suited for your needs. Okay, that's why we have a modularization. You can exchange it. Only you need to remain the top part only. The I.O. module you can change. Okay, so to summarize what I have already explained, okay, uh, module we have a So uh, the first one is the Wi-Fi base. Okay, this one is the LTEM uh, MBIoT. This one LoRaWAN LP1. Okay, so as you know, uh, Wi-Fi 4000 series. This one or 4220. It's using a Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, it's very well known product. Okay, basically what you need to have is the Wi series itself and a 2.4 gigahertz wireless access point. Then you can already deploy the solution. Okay. Meanwhile, for the LTEM and MBIoT, okay. So in here, uh, this is the device. Okay, it's a cellular base. Okay, so uh, you need to have a SIM card. Okay, and then the your teleconnection provider need to have the coverage for it, uh, for you to able to use it. Okay, then you need to remember, WIS four four seven one is for indoor application. Okay, it did not have an IP65 rating for the casing, only for the I.O. module. Okay, it also doesn't have the built-in rechargeable battery. 
Okay, so Y4610 is meant for outdoor. It has IP65 rating. Okay, it has a solar rechargeable battery. Okay, and then for the LoRaWAN. Okay, so basically you need to have the LoRaWAN nodes, Y4610, and then you pair it with the LoRaWAN gateway. For example, Y4610. Okay, and then uh, in here, the Y4610 is meant for outdoor also. Okay, we have a solar rechargeable battery. Okay, and also IP65 rating. Okay, and then LoRaWAN uses star topology. Means that one gateway can handle multiple nodes. And then multiple nodes only can connect to one gateway only. Okay, and then LP1 proprietary Y4210. Okay, it's proprietary means that uh, the nodes itself only can connect to our own LP1 proprietary gateway. Okay, it also uses a star topology. Okay. One gateway cater 64 nodes only, while the LoRaWAN one gateway able to connect up until 500 nodes. Okay, so this is the one of the difference. So in here we can see uh, the comparison table between the wireless technology that I have present presented. Okay, basically if you want to have a real time application, okay, such as machine monitoring, okay, the production line production line process monitoring. Okay, mission critical monitoring. Okay, you better use the Wi-Fi base or because it is, it is uh, for the real time communication. Okay, you need to use this one. Okay, but the disadvantage of the Wi-Fi base, uh, the length, uh, the distance. Okay, it cannot travel long distance. Okay, up until hundred meters only. Okay, and it also have a poor battery life. Okay. So it cannot power by battery because it will consume a lot of uh, power. Okay, so you can see here it's a real time. You have a higher data rate. So that's why when you connect to your Wi-Fi, right, you can uh, able to watch uh, YouTube. Okay, because it ha have a higher data rate. Well established because as you know, a lot of uh, building or factory they have already Wi-Fi router, Wi-Fi access point. So you can just connect to their network. Okay. The disadvantage in here is a crowded. Okay, if you go to the factory or if you go to the building, any commercial building, right, there are tons of wireless network. Okay, already deployed. Okay, so the network uh, is easily crowded. Okay, and then you also can have a interference. Okay, so that's the disadvantage and also the battery life lah. And then this is the LTM and NB IoT. Okay, normally this is for the smart city application, which you need to cover a wide area of space. Okay, you can have a underground basement uh, deployment if using uh, MB IoT. Okay, it has a latency in seconds. Okay, but if using the LTE M, you can have a, a real time. Uh, Real time communication, okay, because it has a less, less latency as compared to MBLT. Okay, both also have a long range, okay, uh, a good uh, battery life because both also can power up by battery. Okay, the problem is uh, cannot connect to a private server, okay, it uh, also doesn't have a high data rate as compared to Wi Fi. Okay, so you cannot like uh, stream video or something like that using a uh, MBLT or LTEM. So LoRaWAN normally is used for uh, wide area okay, or outdoor application. Okay. It has a latency in seconds. Okay. So normally it's not for suited for real-time monitoring. It's only suited for utility monitoring whereby uh, you want to get the data every minutes or every hours. Okay. So you can use a uh, LoRaWAN. Okay. So due to it has a LP1 characteristic, right? it has a long range. Okay, can power up by a battery and have a good battery life. Okay, and then uh, this advantage is same as the LP1 here. Okay, don't have a real time and don't have a high data rate. Okay, for LP1 in here, this is proprietary. Okay, uh, normally it's for wide area application also, uh, and then it's for indoor application. Okay, it has a latency in second. When it has a latency in second, it cannot have a real-time uh, data. Okay, 
So this is also CRP1. It can have a good penetration, okay, long range, and have a good battery life. Okay. So this is the differences between the Wi-Fi, Series LP1, LoRaWAN, and Lo LP1 Pro 3. So you need to choose wisely, okay, which are the suitable uh, wireless technology for your customer application. Okay. Another one for your information, right? HQ has created one YouTube channel. Okay. So you can search Advantage IoT Knowledge Sharing. Videos or me myself using this video to configure the device. Okay. So it's very easy to co to configure the device if you follow uh, this video. Okay. Be sure to check uh, this YouTube channel after this. You can subscribe it. Okay. The next one is the WISE 221X. It's using the LP1 Pro Pi 3 and it is a self powered CT coil or analog input. Okay, so let's go to the slide itself. Okay, so let's see uh, what is the main compelling feature of the WISE series. Okay, the main features in here, right? What's the difference between the rest of the LP1 Pro 3? In here, uh, it no, it don't need to use any power input. Okay, and then it don't need to use any communication wiring. Okay, first of all, we go to the no power input. Okay, this device, right, don't need to use any power input. Okay, you just, uh, means that you don't need to connect any DC line power. You don't need to connect any battery. Okay, because if you connect to the CT coil or the analog input, right? Okay, it will charge and power up the device itself. Okay, so this is one of the main things. Another one is uh, no communication wiring, meaning that uh, it, because it's wireless, right? So you don't need to use, uh, spend any more cost for the wiring. Okay, it also is uh, fully integrated with the CT coil. Okay. Normally, uh, CT coil is used to measure the power current of a machine. Okay. So normally, why user want to measure a power current of a machine? Okay. Uh, actually, because they want to know the machine power current consumption, uh, which is for energy management. Okay. If they don't want to spend or invest in a digital power meter, okay, they can just use the CT coil to measure the current uh, consumption uh, from the. Okay. So this is for the energy management. Another one is for performance and health analysis on a machine. Okay. So uh, what I know uh, actually, right? Uh, if you monitor, if you measure, if you monitor the power current of the machine, right? Okay. If there is uh, any health issue from the machine, right? Okay. It will have a different kind of uh, power current consumption. Okay. So sometimes uh, my customer said if the machine have some issue, it will consume a lot more current than the normally it is. Okay. So you can have a detection uh, warning if you're using this uh, module itself. Okay. So you can see it support LP1. Okay. Better coverage, deeper penetration. Okay. You have a less interference it's as compared if you're using a normal 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Okay. Because like I mentioned before, Wi-Fi base have a lot of interference in the factory uh, environment. Okay, and then in the factory also there is tons of Wi-Fi network is already deployed. So you will have issue there. Okay, as a normal device to cloud solution, we have the total solution. Okay, you can query the data using a mobile, MQTT, press food, or straight away connect to a uh, cloud platform that we support. Okay, so this is uh, the common system architecture for WISE 2210 and 2211. Okay, first of all, WISE 2210 is for the city coil only. You can connect up to three city coil only. Okay, and then the WISE 2210 uh, connect to a uh, AI channel only. Okay, and then you send the data using LP1 to the gateway. Okay, using a star topology. One gateway can cater up to 64 nodes. Okay. And then the gateway itself, uh, the function is to query data from the nodes and then directly send the data to the SCADA or 
to the cloud itself or to other kind of software using this protocol. Okay, let's see the product portfolio. Okay, so WAS2210 is meant to connect to a city coil okay, with AC input. Okay, WAS2210 is only to connect to an analog input which is 4 to 20 milliamp only and it's a DC, okay? Only for 4 to 20 milliamp. So you can connect uh, analog input which is running on uh, 0 to 10 volt, okay? Only for 4 to 20 milliamp. Because we will use the milliamp to charge the device. So this is the target application. Okay, WISE2210, connect to the city coil, okay, for the power measurement, okay, or to check the health of the machine if there is any unusual power current consumption, okay. WISE2210 is meant uh, to connect to a sensors or transmitters or meters that is outputting a 4 to 20 milliamp, okay. For example, if you have a flow meter or gas meter or any meter that's transmitting 4 to 20 milliamp, so you can just check away using uh, this device, okay. And then this device also, you cannot, uh, don't need to use any power input, right? So it will be easier to implement. No need to find any power point to power up the device. Okay, straight away power up by the analog input or the CT coil. So you can have uh, convenience there. So let's see the application. Okay, in here uh, for the chiller and cooling pump in factory. Okay, the project background is the factory owner asked the facility de uh, department to for have a energy saving project. Okay, uh, the owner want to have a 10% cost reduction. Okay, they want to record the power consumption every 50 minutes. Okay, so it's not a real time. Okay, every 50 minutes. And then, uh, Difficult to record power consumption by worker petrol, meaning that uh, it's very hard if you ask somebody to every 15 minutes go to the uh, to check the power consumption, right? So that's why they want to have a solution that able to record the power consumption automatically. And then solution benefit, easy to implement. Don't need to find power source, okay? Because this device don't need to have a power input. Okay, no need communication wiring. Okay, no need wiring construction. So less cost there. Okay, and then after that, they're able to save up to 10 50% electrical fee. So in here, you can see this is the device. They connect to the city coil. Okay, and then send it to the gateway and they send to the uh, SCADA itself. Okay, uh, one of uh, my customer in Malaysia, when I introduced this device, right, at first I also don't know uh, whether this device have any, uh, is able to be market or not, okay. Uh, they are from the building management, okay, BMS uh, SI. So uh, they said, oh, this device is quite good, okay, because first of all, uh, for example, in a hotel, right, okay, they said that uh, after 2 a.m. or after 3 p.m. normally they will uh, automatically or manually turn off the cooling or the aircon of the whole building. Okay, so what if somebody uh, forgot to manually turn off the chiller or the aircon? Okay, so you will incur a lot of electrical fee. Okay, if there is this uh, solution, right? Okay, so for example, after 3 a.m., Okay, maybe uh, they have the solution. Okay, after 3 p.m., they detect if there is a power consumption going through the uh, chiller. Okay, they will uh, give a notification to the user so they can manually turn off the cooling and uh, the chiller itself. So they will reduce the cost. So this one of the example why it able to reduce the electrical fee. Next one is a test equipment. Okay, basically in here, they want to collect the power current for performance analysis of the machine. Okay, because they built their machine. So they want to know uh, what exactly uh, are the machine is uh, using. Okay, how many current they are using. So they want to monitor it. Okay, and then they want to use a sub one gigahertz. So that's why you, they're using LP1.53. Normally because you know in the factory, they are using uh, a lot of 2.4 gigahertz network, so they want to interfere with this existing network. 
So they deploy uh, this uh, solution. So same goes to the clean room. Okay, they want to uh, monitor the water pressure sensor, room temperature, and then the relative humidity. So they don't need to find uh, any power source. Okay, they can just straight away connect to the sensor itself. Okay, send the data to the SCADA itself. It's very straightforward. Okay. So this is the example uh, that is carried out um, by our H2 itself. So you can see uh, the device itself is connected to the city coil. Okay, and the city coil is connected to the uh, power cable of the head dryer. Okay, and then in the cable itself, okay, connected using an Ethernet cable. In the dash, in the PC, they use a node rate. Okay, so you can see here when the hair dryer power off so for sure there is no current going through the city coil so you can see in here uh, there is no uh, current okay in the dashboard here so when it turn on in uh, the hair dryer in a uh, small air volume okay, you can see there is some of power car current going through so whenever it go to the maximum power you can see there is a lot of power current going through Okay, this is the example. The next one, which is the last one, is the WAS2410. Okay, this is for the smart virus. Okay. First of all, this is a, this is the device. Okay, very small only. Okay, inside there is a built-in three-axis vibration sensor. Okay, they're able to, uh, measure the velocity, RMS, acceleration peak, and etc. Okay. It also have a temperature sensor. Okay. They can sense the temperature of the motor itself. Okay. And then it has a IP66 enclosure. Okay. After that, it is a compliant with ISO 10816. Okay. Later on, I will explain to you what is ISO 10816. Okay. And then this device support LoRa or LoRaWAN. Okay, so you need to pair with the LoRa or LoRaWAN gateway. Okay, then this device, right, can be powered up by battery or USB. Okay, so you can use a USB port to power up the device itself. Okay, so you can see this is the product portfolio. Okay, so currently we have a WISE 2410. So it able to measure uh, within this frequency range, 10 to 1 kilohertz. Okay, this is the velocity. Uh, this is the vibration feature that able to measure velocity, RMS, acceleration, RMS and peak, kurtosis, skewness, crest factor, standard deviation. Okay, uh, coming soon we will launch the WISE 2411. Okay, with a broader range of the frequency. Okay, and a lot more vibration features. Okay, so let's go to the ISO 10816. Okay, so this is the ISO 10816. Okay, this is the chart. Okay, so if user would like to monitor a motor, right? So first of all, they need to know the machine, the motor classification. Okay, in here you have a class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. Okay, so after I Google it around, okay, uh, I may need to find what is the meaning of class 1, class 2 and class 3. Okay. So for example, class 1, it is meant for industrial electrical motor up to 15 kilowatt. Okay. So if your motor is belong to this class, so you need to check the vibration in this column only. Okay. So in here you can see there is a good, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, unacceptable. Okay. So if you using the solution, right? Okay. So, for example, you detect the vibration is in between, for example, this one, 4 mm per second. Okay, so you know that your machine is in a satis unsatisfactory uh, condition. So, you need to go to a, what we call it uh, maintenance, okay, to fix it. Okay, so I can say that this solution, right, is meant for early detection of a motor failure or motor vibration issue okay it's early detection 
Okay, so in here there is a function to you to able high or high high alarm. Okay, so if you uh, set a threshold, for example, uh, for example, six. Okay, so if the vibration is exit uh, six mm second, okay, so it will give a message to the, the PC itself, say to the software itself, say that you have an alarm for this uh, vibration sensor. Okay, so it's good for uh, early detection of machine vibration issue. Next is the installation. Okay, where you want to install the sensors to the motor itself. Okay, first of all, uh, if there is a hole already on, or you need to dig a hole in the motor, okay, you can use the start mount. Okay, you can use the start mount and then you can screw it uh, on the motor itself. Okay. If you don't want to dig a hole or the motor doesn't have the screw hole, then you can use this adhesive and mounting pad. So you can use this one. Okay. If you want to have a portability, you can use the magnetic base. Okay. So you just screw in the magnetic to the uh, sensor itself and then you can mount on the motor. Okay. You have a three option. Okay. All of this accessory we provided to you. Okay, so this is the step by step how you want to start uh, with the deploying the solution. Okay, first of all, you need to choose the installation whether you want to have a start mount, uh, adhesive, or a magnetic. Okay, so you need to mount the device. Se secondly, you need to uh, create the LoRaWAN network. Okay, and then in the Notes itself, okay. If you connect to the USB cable, you can directly see the value, okay. If you don't want to get the data from the gateway, you can see directly from the uh, notes itself, okay. So you can see this is the parameters that able to view from the sensor, okay. This is the vibration features in here, okay. So channel zero means for S SAs. Channel 1 is for the Y axis, channel 2 is for Z axis. Okay, we have a 3 axis. Okay, and then channel 3 is for temperature. You can see we have a built in temperature. Okay, so you can know uh, the motor uh, temperature because sometimes if the motor has some issue, it will have some uh, weird temperature is happening. Okay, you can detect. So this is the high alarm status. So you can monitor the high alarm in here. So this is uh, normally uh, how you want to configure uh, or the system architecture of the device. Okay, so you need to build your own LoRaWAN network itself. Okay, something like this. Okay, you need to have the gateway or you connect to the party gateway. Okay, from the gateway itself, you're using this protocol to extract the data out. Okay, if you don't want to use the gateway itself, right, it's actually uh, the USB port. When you connect to the USB port, okay, you can directly uh, communicate to the sensor node. So you can directly know the vibration value. So how is the vibration sensor is mounted? Okay, normally we would like to uh, monitor the bearing itself. Okay, normally the bearing uh, is the most uh, common thing that is always uh, be change in the motor itself okay so you want to mount the vibration sensor as close to the bearing itself okay so this is how it looks like okay normally bearing location in here so you need to mount near the bearing okay not uh, far away from the bearing okay secondly you need to make sure the the sensor is firmly attached okay so make sure the sensor the motor surface is flat Okay, there is no debris. Okay, so then uh, if you're using the magnetic, so you need to make sure the motor surface is a uh, truly magnetic. Okay, then if you're using the magnetic, right, the magnetic itself, uh, you need to take care because it able to lose uh, magnetism if you heated it up or if you drop it. Okay, so you need to take care the magnetic. Okay, so uh, another one is the orientation of the sensor. Okay, if vertical, this is how it looks like. 
horizontal is how it looks like. Okay, so you cannot uh, attach it in an angle like this. So this one is not for the vertical. Another one is you need to mount the sensors in the same location. Okay, for example, in January in here, February also in here, March also in here. Okay, because you need to because in different location we have a different uh, value of vibration. So you need to make sure you attach at the same location. Okay, so you can have the same uh, vibration uh, signal. Okay, so for target application, okay. So for the target application is uh, basically any uh, project or any site that have a motor, electrical motor itself. Whether it is a pump, okay, whether it's a conveyor belt, okay, or chiller, okay, cooling tower, something like that, okay. So you can choose uh, this solution to deploy the smart vibration sensor. So example this one. Okay, they want to monitor the hatchback. Okay, and the pump in the factory. Yeah. So because uh, this solution is for early detection, right? So they're able to reduce the risk of hatchback shutdown. Okay, because whenever the hatchback is down, it will impact the production. So they don't want to have the shutdown. Okay, this solution, right, is very easy because it's using the ISO 10816. Standard. So you just refer to the chart. You can know the motor is in what condition, okay? Because otherwise, if you did not follow this chart, right, uh, you need to have a background of a vibration analysis in order for you to analyze the vibration uh, value, okay? If you follow the standard, it's very easy, straightforward, okay? Very simple, okay? Cost effective, no wiring for the power because you can use a battery, okay? No wiring for the communication because it's a wireless. Okay, so this is the normal architecture. This one, uh, escalator, okay. Escalator, normally there is a motor to move the escalator, right? So they want to monitor the motor, okay. Same goes to the previous case study. They use the ISO 10816, okay. So they can predict uh, when the machine is about to fail, okay, because you have the status, right? So this is a chill water pump in FMB foundry. So they combine the vibration sensor and also the city coil. Okay. So they able to monitor the power consumption of the chill water pump and also the vibration uh, parameters of the pump. Okay. So uh, they use a, they want to use a wireless node. Okay. To avoid cable install near power cable. Okay, as you know, uh, this machinery, this motor is used a high power, high voltage cable. Okay, so you know a high voltage cable, if you uh, near to the signal cable or sensor cables, it will uh, induce interference. Okay, so your value is not correct. So they want to uh, emit, uh, omit this one. So they want to have a good uh, wireless solution. Okay, so they deploy this one, LP1 architecture and also a lower one solution. Okay, both do not use a 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, both use a uh, sub 1G. So you have a less interference. Okay. So uh, this all from uh, today's training. So uh, I already mentioned about uh, four technologies in a WIFE 4000 series. For, first of all is WIFE Wi-Fi series. Okay, you know Wi-Fi for real time, okay, but it cannot go uh, further, 100 meter only. Then we have for MB, IoT, and also LTE-M. Okay, this one is cellular-based LP1, so you need to make sure you have the SIM card and the coverage, okay. And then uh, you have a two options. First is indoor, don't have the IP65 rating, don't have the rechargeable battery. Another one is 4671. We have the for outdoor IP65 and also uh, have a solar rechargeable battery. Another technology is the LoRa WAN. Okay, so you can pair with our own private LoRa or lo our own LoRa WAN gateway or another third party gateway. Okay, and uh, the last one is the LP1 proprietary. Okay, this one is Avante owns LP1 proprietary solution, so you need to pair with the same uh, LP1 nodes 
to the LP1 uh, gateway itself. Okay, so uh, that's all for my uh, explanation and presentation today. So we will go to the Q&A session.